The local government news roundup is proudly supported by Davidson. For 30 years, Davidson has been strengthening the local government sector by identifying and providing the people, expertise and experience that local government needs to enhance its capability, productivity and performance. Davidson is nationally recognised for its executive recruitment services and over the past four years has built a business advisory practice rapidly evolving into one of the nation's foremost and trusted local government business consultancy firms. The Davidson methodology and approach is simple. Thinking beyond now and aiming to be a valued partner with your local government, not just for the immediate project, but for the next 30 years. Speak to Justin Hanney or Seamus Scanlon to find out more or head to davidsonwp.com.au. Davidson, your future, your partner. Today on the Roundup, an extension of time for monitors at Mooney Valley, Northern Grampians Council returns serve to a councillor's call for a monitor. Glen Ira hails a win for the community with a new cycling project. A retiring former mayor unretires. Liverpool Council claims a win in round one against the state government. A Queensland deputy mayor eyes a seat in state parliament. Dorset Council awaits a minister's ruling after a board of inquiry and Adelaide's Mayor defends high staff turnover figures. All of that and more just ahead. Good morning, it's Monday the 29th of July 2024. I'm Chris Eddy, back with another curated selection of stories about councils across Australia and beyond on the Local Government News Roundup. Also today, a Western Australian councillor refusing to attend mandated inclusivity training. The podcast is brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association, the national broadcaster on all things local government, with support from Davidson, the nationally recognised local government recruitment and business advisory service. Minister for Local Government Melissa Horne has extended the appointment of municipal monitors Prue Digby and Philip Carruthers at Mooney Valley City Council until February next year to continue improving governance practices. The minister has received interim advice from the monitors that while there's been progress, further support is needed during ongoing IBAC investigations and the upcoming October 2024 elections. The monitors will focus on enhancing the councillor induction program, strengthening councillor relationships and improving CEO recruitment processes. The extension to the initial term of six months means the monitor's appointment will now cover a total period of 13 months. Updated terms of reference for the appointment have been published on the local government Victoria website. Northern Grampians Shire Council has returned serve to a request from one of its own councillors for the appointment of a municipal monitor. Last week, Councillor Lauren Dempsey announced on social media that she had written to the local government minister calling for a monitor because of an alleged psychologically unsafe and toxic working environment. But Mayor Councillor Rob Haswell has responded, saying the council is concerned about Councillor Dempsey's recent posts and that the council is functioning well and running its meetings as per the Code of Conduct. He said there's a clear hierarchy under the Local Government Act for managing councillor conduct issues and Councillor Dempsey's request comes after she made a misconduct complaint against fellow councillors. Mayor Haswell said there have been no findings of misconduct or serious misconduct against any councillors during the current term of the council. The Level Crossing Removal Project and the City of Glen Ira have agreed to construct a new Copenhagen-style separated cycling lane on Queen's Avenue, connecting Glen Huntley and Caulfield train stations. The project, which includes widening Queen's Avenue and introducing a 50 km per hour speed limit, aims to improve cycling access while preserving trees and residential parking. LXRP will fund the construction and the council will execute the works, expected to start soon and finish by year-end. Mayor Anne-Marie Cade said it was a great outcome for the community and an example of what can happen when different levels of government come together. Meanwhile, former two-time Glen Ira Mayor Jim McGee has reconsidered his decision to retire from local government at the upcoming elections. 
Councillor McGee told the Roundup that he'd received strong encouragement from local residents and community groups, friends and family to recontest the election and if re-elected he would continue the campaign to reverse government cost shifting. He served as Mayor of Glen Eyre in 2015 and for two consecutive terms in 2022 and 2023. Ararat Rural City Council is advancing Pomodal's bushfire recovery by securing a bushfire hazard landscape assessment and inviting qualified bushfire consultants to join a panel of preferred contractors. The initiative, funded by the state, aims to streamline fire risk assessments and expedite the rebuilding of homes for fire-affected residents. Additional measures include waiving planning and building fees and reducing bureaucratic hurdles to facilitate a swift and safe reconstruction process. ABC News has reported on concerns about rapid growth in Gisborne as Macedon Rangers Shire Council endorses a new town structure plan and rejects a developer's proposal to build 1,400 houses. The developer says he'll seek ministerial intervention to overrule the decision against his proposal on 80 hectares between Gisborne and Riddles Creek. As the site falls outside the declared town boundary, the developer would be limited to around 60 one-acre lots due to zoning rules. The council says it's trying to protect the town's boundary and manage growth, and some residents are worried about the area losing its rural character. Gisborne's population is expected to nearly double by 2050. Indigo Shire Council Mayor Sophie Price has expressed disappointment after a recent increase in attacks on public property. Toilets have been particularly targeted, resulting in significant damage including smashed fixtures, broken mirrors and graffiti. Mayor Price said a recent arson attack at Lyons Park in Rutherglen had caused approximately $4,000 in damage and the loss of a disabled toilet. She's urged the community to report any suspicious activity. In today's Victorian Council news briefs, the cost of a new toddler pool at Sunbury Aquatic and Leisure Centre has increased from the initial $2.6 million to $3.8 million due to increased expenses. Sunbury Life reported that Hume City Councillors have voted to allocate additional funds to cover a $700,000 shortfall, potentially at the expense of the Riddle Road Landfill Upgrade project. Northern Grampianshire Council has started the Stall Cemetery expansion project to provide over 5,500 additional plots and meet the community's burial needs for the next century. The project, funded by $550,000 from the council budget, includes earthworks, new roads, footpaths and landscaping improvements. Nominations are open for the Borbor Shire Sporting Walk of Fame at Civic Park in Warrigal. Launched in 2000, the Walk of Fame celebrates local sporting excellence and the community is encouraged to nominate athletes to join the 24 that are currently honoured. And IBAC, Victoria's independent broad-based anti-corruption commission, has appointed a new Chief Executive Officer. Current County Court of Victoria CEO Alison Byrne will take up the position next month, bringing 25 years' experience in criminal law and regulation to the position. The Local Government News Roundup is brought to you with the support of Davidson Recruitment and Business Advisory Services to the local government sector and, of course, the Victorian Local Governance Association, which has the Victorian Councillor Census closing this week. It's an opportunity for local government representatives to share their personal experiences of council to help the VLGA develop an evidence base of councillor feedback, which will ultimately be used to improve the councillor experience. Councillors are encouraged to complete the survey using the unique link emailed directly to them. Now let's move into our National Roundup segment. Liverpool City Council in New South Wales has won the initial round in the Land and Environment Court against the State Government, which has agreed to cease actions against the Council until a full hearing in August. On Friday, the Court granted injunctions preventing the Minister and others from suspending the Council or conducting a public inquiry until the final hearing. The council is arguing that the minister has acted unlawfully and an investigation interim report was biased and procedurally unfair. The interim report has been removed from the Office of Local Government website. The Hillshire Council is urging residents to voice their opinions on the New South Wales Government's proposal for 42,000 homes between Kellyville and Bella Vista metro stations. 
criticising it for lacking adequate infrastructure plans. Mayor Dr Peter Gangimi said the proposals contained significant flaws, including high population density, insufficient road upgrades and inadequate school provisions. The council has launched an advocacy campaign to inform residents and encourage feedback before the public exhibition closes on the 9th of August. Canamble Shire Council has unveiled a draft master plan for a tourism attraction aimed at making the town the gateway to the Great Artesian Basin. The Daily Telegraph has reported on the plan which includes eco-cabins, artesian baths, a function centre, camping sites and amenities with a luxury component featuring spa treatments and healing services. The project has received $5.5 million from the New South Wales Regional Tourism Activation Fund with an additional $1.25 million coming from the council. The site on the Castle Ray River was purchased in 2023 and development is expected to begin within the next 12 months. To Queensland, a withdrawal from the race for the state seat of Mackay will likely pave the way for Mackay Regional Council's Deputy Mayor Belinda Hassan, according to the Courier-Mail. Councillor Hassan has previously contested at the federal level unsuccessfully and worked in the office of retiring MP Julianne Gilbert as a casual prior to being re-elected to the council. Councillor Hassan has defended her time in the MP's office, saying it was while the council was in caretaker mode and that it had been cleared by the council's CEO at the time. Burdekin Shire Council has rejected a push to rename a local creek despite a request from the Department of Resources under new laws aimed at renaming places that may cause offence. Yellow Gin Creek is one of 30 in Queensland to have the word gin in its title, a word that historically referred to Aboriginal women and is considered offensive. The council cited local historical significance and a lack of clear historical documentation for the name's origin as reasons for the decision, voting six to one against the renaming, according to a report from the Townsville Bulletin. Noosa Council says it will take additional time to review plans for the Noosaville foreshore and the Noosa River after receiving significant community feedback. Mayor Frank Wilkie said the council would take time to understand what the community has said, emphasising the importance of incorporating local views into the long-term plans. Over 2,000 responses and 222 written submissions were received, highlighting priorities such as ongoing maintenance, improved access and addressing environmental challenges. More news briefs from around the nation. Separate investigations are ongoing by Sunshine Coast Council after the deliberate poisoning of trees and shrubs at the Bedina Beach Foreshore Reserve and Karamindi Lake. The council has installed large warning signs at each location to highlight the damage and deter further illegal activities. It says the signs will stay in place until the sites have regenerated. The City of Fremantle in WA, with $500,000 in funding from the state government, will install a 340-metre shark barrier at Bathers Beach to create a safe swimming area by this summer, according to Perth Now. The project aims to address community fears following recent shark bite fatalities. The Australian Local Government Association has engaged an economics consultancy to research the support needed by local governments to increase affordable housing supply. The findings will be presented at the National Local Government Housing Summit in Adelaide on the 16th of August. And Leeton Shire Council in New South Wales is offering free microchipping for cats and dogs from the 5th to 9th of August during Local Government Week 2024 to promote responsible pet ownership. The initiative is part of various activities planned to highlight the services and facilities provided by the council. In news out of Tasmania, the suspended Dorset Council has received a Board of Inquiry report from the Minister for Local Government. The report was considered at a closed meeting of the Council last week after an extended period of 21 days in which key people were given the opportunity to comment. The Commissioner has provided the Minister with a submission relating to the findings and recommendations in the report and the Council says it will not make any further comment until the Minister provides directions. From The Advocate, a report that Burnie City Council will advocate for state law changes to ensure councillors against psychosocial harm, as current workers' compensation does not cover them. 
Psychosocial hazards include bullying, traumatic events and excessive workloads. The council is seeking support from the Local Government Association of Tasmania to lobby for legislation mandating insurance for councillors and to collaborate with the insurance industry on prioritising the issue. City of Adelaide Lord Mayor Jane Lomax-Smith has been forced to defend the turnover of staff in her office after questions were raised as to why a dozen staff members have left in the past 18 months. The details were included in a council report in response to a question on notice from Councillor Henry Davis, who told the Adelaide Advertiser that he believes the issue should be investigated. Mayor Lomax-Smith claims the turnover is not unusual due to short-term contracts. The issue has exacerbated tensions between the two after Mayor Lomax-Smith recently initiated legal action against Councillor Davis, alleging he had defamed her at a public meeting in June. And to Western Australia now, where City of Albany councillor and Liberal Party candidate Dr Thomas Bruff has reportedly refused to attend inclusivity training ordered by the council, comparing it to conversion therapy and forced indoctrination. Out in Perth reported that the training was mandated following controversial comments he made about the LGBTIQA plus community. Despite issuing an apology, Councillor Bruff has remained defiant, continuing to criticise the council and the media. Amanda Dexter, the CEO of the Shire of Derby West Kimberley, has resigned effective the 11th of October to take on the role of CEO at the Shire of Carnarvon, her hometown. Amanda has led the Shire for five years through significant challenges, including the COVID-19 pandemic and the Kimberley floods of January 2023. Shire President Peter McCumstey paid tribute to Ms Dexter's leadership, saying she'd given a wonderful level of dedicated service and commitment. The Council will now begin the process of seeking a replacement CEO. At Carnarvon, Ms Dexter takes up the role vacated by Andrea Selvey, who's moved to Augusta Margaret River in the CEO position. Acting CEO John Atwood will continue to serve in that role until Ms Dexter's arrival in October. And a decision at the City of South Perth to remove council members' photos and contact details from its My South Perth magazine has been met with surprise by some councillors. Councillor Mary Choi raised the issue at a recent council meeting and asked for reinstatement of the councillor profiles in future editions. But, as Perth now reported, a council executive advised that the removal of the material was part of an effort to make the publication more engaging. Corporate Services Director Gary Adams said the intent of the magazine was to focus on local stories, city projects and events, and inclusion of council members' details after the last election was temporary. And we've arrived at the Global Roundup for this edition, number 368. We're starting in Canada, and our thoughts go out to the folks there in Jasper, particularly a massive wildfire in the Jasper National Park has destroyed hundreds of structures in the town and continues to burn out of control, according to CBC News. An evacuation order is in place for the town of Jasper, which has suffered damage to utilities, roads and building infrastructure. An estimated 17,100 Albertans have been evacuated as of the weekend. The city of Calgary has opened a reception centre to provide assistance to evacuees and is providing access to accommodations for evacuees and their pets. The municipality of Jasper is providing regular updates on its website. Officials are warning that the fire in the National Park could continue burning for months. In the UK, Canterbury City Council is cracking down on shop fronts deemed too garish and out of keeping with the historic city's character, according to BBC News. The council has issued 22 enforcement notices to businesses in listed buildings that have made alterations without permission, including inappropriate signs and flashing lights. The move has received the support of the Canterbury Society, which said the garish and overbearing shop fronts shatter the perception of the city's rich heritage and history. The BBC also reported on concerns at Southampton City Council over the high number of sick days taken by staff due to mental health issues. More than half of the 27,500 sick days in the past year have been attributed to psychological absences such as anxiety, depression and stress. Council members have questioned the adequacy of current support measures and are considering an inquiry into the issue, which is seen as a major obstacle to the city's growth and residents' well-being. 
From New Zealand now, a councillor at Dunedin, Councillor Lee Vandervis, faces possible censure after a code of conduct complaint was upheld regarding his comments on Maori appointments and protocols, according to a report from Stuff. The complaint, lodged by Councillor Marie Lafiso, highlighted Councillor Vandervis' refusal to participate in Maori protocols and his critical remarks about Maori representation. The Council, which has adopted a zero-tolerance stance on racism since the 2019 Christchurch terror attacks, will discuss the matter further this week. Van der Viz, who is currently overseas, did not participate in the investigation, which concluded his objections were racially motivated. And Patrick Braxton, the first black mayor of New Bern, Alabama in the US, who was previously locked out of town hall by white officials, is returning to office following a lawsuit settlement. Newsday reported that the agreement approved by a district court judge recognises Braxton as mayor and mandates the town to hold municipal elections for the first time in decades. The settlement also ends the long-standing practice of appointing successes without elections and aims to establish a town council that represents New Bern's majority black population. And that's the latest from the Local Government News Roundup, Monday the 29th of July edition number 368. And if it's appeared a bit later in your feed than usual, you can blame Jess Fox for her gold medal heroics at the Olympic Games for a later than usual start for this presenter. I'll have more local government news for you in our next edition coming to you on Wednesday. If you'd like to check out more of the stories featured in our program today, you'll find the links on www.lgnewsroundup.com along with a full transcript. The Local Government News Roundup is recorded in the city of Greater Geelong, Victoria, on the land of the Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nation. Until next time, thanks for listening and bye for now. <laughs>